please. Okay. What's the objection? Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. Re well, let's read that first. Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Yes. I'm going to go and read it. Yep. Okay, so 91, 11 and 12 says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Hmm. So what's the objection? In Matthew 4 and Luke 4, Matthew 4, Luke 4, specifically, if you go to Matthew 4, brother, read from verse 5 all the way to 7. Matthew 4, 5 to 7. Okay, that's the temptation by Satan. Yeah, because he's, Satan's going to quote this psalm. This is the objection. Satan's going to quote Psalm 91, verses 11 to 12. What is, how does our Lord respond? Okay, so starting from verse 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You want me to read the seven? And then what did Jesus say? Yeah, read his response. And Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Yep. Okay, so Satan, Muhammad's father, like his children, the Muslims who don't believe in Jesus, twist and pervert scripture. And Satan said, Psalm 91, 11 to 12 is about you, Jesus. And God will make sure no harm comes upon you because he has his angels to watch over you so you won't be harmed. Therefore, this proves that Jesus did not die on the cross because God will not allow Jesus to be harmed. God will not allow Jesus to be killed on the cross. That's their logic. Okay. So notice, like their father, the devil, they're following Satan in perverting the psalm, misquoting the psalm, wrenching the psalm out of context to make it say something it wasn't meant to say. And they don't realize they're being satanic and following the example of the, the devil the father of their prophet Muhammad. Isn't it ironic? But let's now take this Psalm 91, destroy their objection, and bury Muhammad by the grace of Jesus. Are you guys ready? Psalm 91, verse 11 to 12. See, Satan says it's about you, Jesus, and Jesus didn't say it's not about him. And Satan said, see, this Psalm promises that nothing will happen to you. No harm will come upon you. The angels will protect you. How much more would then Jesus be protected from dying on the cross? <clears throat> Two facts. <clears throat> Forget the point, forget the fact, forget the point, forget the fact that both Matthew and Luke quote this exchange between the devil and Jesus, and neither one of them had any problem with Psalm 91 being about Jesus and still affirming that Jesus was killed on the cross, buried, and raised on the third day. Isn't it ironic that the two writers who actually give you this exchange and actually quote Satan quoting Psalm 91 are the same writers that depict Jesus prophesying that he'd be killed, buried, and be raised on the third day and record the fulfillment of Jesus being killed, buried, and raised on the third day? I guess they didn't get the memo. I guess Matthew and Luke didn't get the memo that Psalm 91 refutes any notion of Jesus being killed. But beyond that, Let's now read what they left out. Let's now read what they left out. Go back to Psalm 91. Read verses 11 and 12. This time at 13. All right. And go to Psalm 91. Yes, verse 11, 12. But at 13 now for good measure. Okay, so I'm going to read verse 11, 12 and 13. Verse 11 says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Verse 13, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. This is a miraculous supernatural psalm that perfectly describes Jesus and is perfectly fulfilled in Jesus and proves the crucifixion. Because you notice verse 13, this one whom the angels will watch over, he is coming to do what? Tread. Tread is what you, you know, you stomp, stomp. Tread is to stomp. You're going to stomp on the lion and the adder, snake. You're going to stomp on the young lion and the serpent. You will trample them under your foot. Isn't it ironic that these children of the devil did not read verse 13? Because the psalm is saying, you are protected 
so that you don't fail in your mission, you're protected to perfectly accomplish your mission. And what's your mission? You will stop, trample under your foot the lion, the young lion, the adder, the snake. Let me show you who the lion and the snake happen to be. Go to 1 Peter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Zena, are you getting it? Are you still there, Zena? Because I'm answering the question for you. All right. First Peter 5, verse 8 reads, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, brawls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So Satan is called a lion? Yep. Okay. Is he also called a snake, a serpent? Go to now Revelation 12, verse 9. Revelation 12, verse, verse 9. 9. Revelation 12, verse 9, where John makes it clear who the serpent is. A great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So here Satan is all of the Quran because it says Satan is the deceiver of the whole world, but all of the Quran says he is Khairun Makarin, the best of oh, all deceivers. Exactly. So guys, according to Revelation 12, 9, Satan is all of the Quran, the father of Muhammad, because the Quran has Allah saying, I, Allah, am the best of all deceivers. But the New Testament says that Satan, he's the one who deceives the whole world. Okay, now let's tie in the dots. Revelation 91, I'm sorry, Psalm 91, 13. Psalm 91, 13 states, that one who will be miraculously protected from all harm is sent to perfectly accomplish his mission of stomping, crushing under his foot, under his feet, the lion, the young lion, the serpent, the adder, all of which are descriptions of Satan. In other words, Psalm 91 actually confirms the crucifixion. Why? Because how did Jesus crush, trample the lion, the young lion, the serpent, the adder, the snake under his feet? By the cross. The cross was Jesus' way of crushing the head of the serpent, the snake, the adder, the lion, the young lion. Who is the lion? Who is the young lion? Who is the adder? Who is the snake, the serpent? The devil. So the cross was the means by which Jesus fulfilled Psalm 91, verses 11 to 13, which is why he could not fail, but had to go to the cross and die. And there was no power on earth to stop him from dying on the cross because he was sent to accomplish his mission that through the cross, he will crush the lion, the young lion, adder, snake, i.e. the devil. And I'm right. here.